I mean, I don't go in for... I think I'm a reasonably rational person. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not a crank, but the thing is, I think I'm psychic. Right. Hmm. <laughs> well, what makes you think that? Well, I started having these dreams, right, and then what happens is they come true. Things actually happen. Really? I know what that must sound like. Well, what kind of things are we talking about? Can you give me an example? Well, I dreamt that I was hoovering the lounge, right? Yeah. And then the next day I actually did. <laughs> right. And then I dreamt I was eating boiled eggs. Right. And then I was having breakfast and I realised I was having boiled eggs. <laughs> right, OK. Spooky, isn't it? Well, well it's quite uh, spooky. Yeah, but I think what's probably happening here, actually, Miriam, is you're just dreaming about things that are really going to happen. What do you mean? Well, I don't think you're psychic. You're just dreaming about things that are actually going to happen anyway. Oh, right. Yeah, there's nothing to be worried about. I see. I see. Yeah. Because last night I dreamt it was lunchtime and I was just getting some salad out of the fridge. Right. And outside the window I saw this guy landing in the back garden on a parachute. Well... And he was naked and he ripped the parachute off, broke down the back door, bent me over the kitchen table and had sex with me for about an hour and a half. <laughs> in fact, if it's all right with you, I think I'd better be getting home. <laughs> Honestly, had to park in Fairfield Road. Really? Oh, dear. Yeah. Ridiculous. Might as well not have a car. Quicker to walk. Well, the last time we went in your car, it was quicker to walk. In fact, we did walk. <laughs> it's getting stupid. What'll happen eventually is people just have to move closer to their cars. <laughs> I mean, what are the... Jesus Christ. What do you think? What is it? I told you my grandmother had left me a clock. God, how big was your grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> I delivered it this afternoon. You don't like it. I can't get far enough away from it to tell. Where are you going to put it? What do you mean, where am I going to put it? I've put it. Is it going? No, not yet. You're just in time. Apparently, you're not supposed to mess about with the hands. It's a very delicate thing. Yeah, it looks it. So, I thought what I'd do is, I'd wait until it actually is 20 past 11, and then I'd set it going. Well, it was either that or alter time itself. Right. So, um, how's Ian? He's all right, I don't know. Well, he's your brother. I mean, how's he getting on in his new job? Is he making friends? You must invite him over, I keep saying. Yeah, I will. I think he's quite busy. Yeah, well, I expect he's having to fight off hundreds of nymphomaniac nurses. Why would anybody do that? <laughs> oh, right, OK, it's time. Here we go. I formally declare the Salinger family heirloom open. Right, well, I'm going to go and met... No, I'm just going to go and met... What? What's the matter? Listen. Isn't that amazing? Can I talk now? <laughs> that is the actual sound of time passing. We're getting older with every second and there's nothing we can do about it. Right. I was going to make myself a cup of coffee, but it's not much point now. <laughs> That's OK. Oh, you know you asked me to tell you of Ian called? Yeah. Well, he hasn't. Oh, great. Thanks a lot for that. Well, he's probably been busy. I mean, he's only been here a few days. It's three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks? Yeah, yeah well, that's hardly enough time to unpack your... You know, get your... That is quite a long time, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I know he goes out with Douglas once a week and does, you know, mail things, but I just don't seem to be able to get at him. Have you tried phoning him? Oh, don't be ridiculous. What do you think I am? Desperate? Of course, the other thing is him being a doctor and a he's big... He's a surgeon. Yeah. Actually. Him being a surgeon in a big hospital. I mean, he's bound to be surrounded by loads of yeah, young... Yeah, right, thanks. Because my friend Emma, she's a nurse, and honestly, you would not believe the guy... No, yes, I would. Shut up. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, what is it with men and attractive young women? I don't get it. No. I mean, I'm a grown woman. I'm educated. I'm reasonably successful. I've got my own home. I know who I am. You know what it is? They're frightened. That's what it is. They can't take it. Yeah, try not to come across as being too desperate. No, right, good point. Because <laughs> there is no bigger turn-off for a man than a needy woman. Yeah, right. Well, 
thanks very much. Can I see you again next week? <laughs> oh, Kate, would you sponsor me? Sponsor you? I already pay you. I'm doing this half marathon, it's for the homeless. Half marathon? God, how far's that? 13 miles. 13? Are you mad? Craig's doing it too. Well, that clinches it. <laughs> What's the going rate? Oof, I don't know, a uh, pound a mile, whatever you can. What about five pounds? <laughs> five pounds? God, Kate, you are one of the most... Five lovely... pounds in total. <laughs> Thanks, that's very generous. Hi. Morning. Oh, Philip called. You're two o'clock? Yeah. He said he's not coming this afternoon. Right, OK. Did he say why not? He's too depressed. Great. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's why he's coming. Well, that's what he said. He said he'd call about coming next week. Well, next week I'm going to phone him and tell him I'm too depressed. <laughs> too play that game. How are things? Great. If I hear one more time what a wonderful guy Ian is, I'm going to go mad. Right. How will that actually help? I'll tell you one thing, if this goes on much longer, I'll just move out. See how she likes that. Well, she will like it. Well, She's always asking when you're going to move out. All right, then. I'll stay. <laughs> That's very good. The thing about running is it's basically to do with your mind and not your body. Really? Well, you've had it, then. It's all about mental discipline. It's amazing what you can achieve when you really want something. It's pretty much the same with not running. Yeah? I really, really don't want to run. I never have. Yeah, right. It... So there are still some spaces left if you want to sponsor me. Some spaces? There's only one name here. How many? One. Right, yeah, so there are still some spaces. OK. Two pounds a mile, do me. Well, hey, people give whatever they're comfortable with. You know, I mean, he obviously felt that that was appropriate, but really it's between you and your conscience. This is your handwriting, isn't it? Yes, it is, sir. <laughs> Mr John Toast. <laughs> it was breakfast time. You know, and it's not easy to think of names. That's just to get the ball rolling. There you go. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, it's, every pound is a pound closer to a total. Can I just ask some of your customers? Be my guest. And are you actually going to be one yourself, or is this just a fundraising tour? Oh, no, yeah, thanks. Regular cappuccino? Oh, no, thank you. No, dairy products are full of fatty fats. That's why cows die so young. <laughs> no, I found this uh, special athlete's diet on the internet. It's fantastic. I eat pasta one day, chocolate the next, nothing at all the next day, then on the fourth day, I can eat as many bananas as I want. <laughs> Have a sparkling mineral water, please. Right, sparkling mineral water. Yeah, mineral water is really good for you. It's full of water. I mean, we're all going to die eventually. Now I'm waiting for seven o'clock. Kate, this is no way to lead your life. No, no, I've realised why it wasn't striking. Oh, great. Yeah, you have to wind up this completely separate little wind-up thing here. Oh. Look, I can't wait. It's one of my favourite sounds. It's like, it's like hearing church bells across a valley on a summer morning. Except this will be closer and it'll be more... Well, it'll be every, it'll be every day, every, every hour. It'll be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, like a dentist drill. <laughs> Oh, no. That'll be Ian. I'll let him in. No, 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 don't. That's all right. I'll go down. That's oh, all right. Hi. Ian. Yeah, come on up. But I don't say that to all the... Oh, he's coming. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, no, no. It's all right. I'll go down and uh, meet him on the stairs. I don't want... I mean, he's old. It's I don't right, want him I to... stay where you are. Don't be silly. It'd be nice to see him. Right. Hi. Ian, hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too yeah. bad. No. Oh, no. <laughs> It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. How are you? Well, we'd no, better hang be... Hang on, yeah. hang on. We're talking. I keep saying to Douglas, you must come over for a meal or something. Yeah, that'd be nice. Blimey, nice clock. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, nice and big. Yeah, my grandmother left it to me. God, how big was your grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Anyway, we better be going. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. You've got to stay and listen to this. But it's only a play. Wow. <laughs> wow, what do you think about... What do you think about... What do you... What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Without being disrespectful, was your grandmother deaf? I think she was in the end, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet she was. I was mad. No, probably 
just needs a bit of fine tuning. If it's striking 13 at 7 o'clock, who knows what it's capable of? <laughs> it might just be warming up. But you'll get used to it. It'll become part of your daily pattern. What do you mean, pattern? It's completely random. It's crazy. <laughs> It is actually quite loud. OK, what about at night? What? The chimes. What about during the night? You know, that time when you were trying to sleep? Or it'll be dark. <laughs> it's none of my business, but if you're really worried, why don't you just stop the pendulum? Just stop the pendulum. It's easy. Obvious. Uh, ooh. What? I've broken the key off in the lock. <laughs> right, right. No, that's right. So it'll probably just... You know, wind down and, and stop of its own accord, won't it? How long does that take? Um... Well, I'm no expert, but normally these sort of clocks have an eight-day movement. Eight days, that's all. Come on, we're going to be late. You said we'd be there by quarter to 14. Oh, where are you off to? <laughs> we're just going to play poker with this guy from work. Oh, poker! Yes, yeah, the one thing I really miss from Canada, regular poker evenings. Oh, well, great! Well, Douglas, you can play here. No. Well, you'd be welcome. Well, actually, we can't play at Bob's next week. He's got family staying. He might not have. He has. Well, there you go, then. Play here. Bring Bob. Do you play? Me? No, she doesn't. Yo, Sean, I've bet your ass I play some and then some. <laughs> what? <laughs> I do play. <laughs> So then you've got four cards of the same kind, right? Which is, which is called... Um, four of a kind. Four of a kind, yeah, which is a good hand, right? But, and this is the good bit, you don't want anybody else to know that, so you act like it's a crap hand. Right, how do I do that? What? How do I do that? Well, that's, that's the skill of poker. I mean, it's, it's all about bluff, you know? I mean, OK, what you could do, for example, is, when it comes to your turn, you just fold, chuck all your cards in. Now, that would fold anybody. Right, but then I'd have chucked away a really good hand. Yeah, it, but <laughs> they wouldn't know that, would they? I mean, how could they? Um, it's a brilliant game. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for that, Craig. It's been really helpful. No problem. How many of those have you eaten today? Today? Um, what day is it today? Thursday. Six. What, six already? It's only lunchtime. Yeah, I know, but I didn't eat anything at all yesterday. I'm starving. Oh, how's it going? It's good, yeah. We're doing... Uh, 10k every day at the moment, which is, and my time is currently 51.23, which isn't bad, you know, for the northern hemisphere. What about Mel? She's doing okay, yeah. She's, she's doing okay, yeah, yeah. What's her time? Mel, uh, I think, I don't know, probably, I think somewhere about 49.07. Really? So, what, a little bit faster than you, then? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't really thought about it like that. Oh, Mel! Hi. Just talking about you. Hi. Hi. Hi, Joe. Can I have um, a large cappuccino with extra cream and a bacon mozzarella and tomato ciabatta, please, to start with? Any bananas with that? <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, you're not exactly holding back, are you? No, well, the thing about doing this much exercise is you can eat whatever you like. It's great. I love it. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> OK, so this is just for practice, just for Kate. Oh, no, I don't need to practice round. Let's go for it. Really? Are you sure? Of course. No, no, I think Kate should have a practice round. It's only fair. No, I'm fine. Hit it. OK. Can I have a practice round, Ian? <laughs> no practice rounds. What? No practice rounds. I did not come here this evening for fun. No, me neither. No. No, good point. Yeah, good. That, that sorted out. Rob has a very stressful job at the hospital. Oh, really? What do you do? I try not to think about it. Good, that's good. <laughs> OK. Is everybody in? Yep, you bet. No. What? We're one short. Oh, why? Who else is coming? No, no, Kate, I don't think you've put your auntie in. Oh, no, of course. No, no, that's right. No. No, I probably haven't. I don't always. <laughs> we normally start with a minimum ante of one pound. Oh, right. Yes, of course. <laughs> Poker's great, isn't it? Can I get you another beer? No. No, oh, right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so, Douglas. What? 
Oh, no, I'm out. Me too. Me too. So, Ian, you play a pretty mean game. Whose turn is it? your four. Blimey. Okay. Oops, steady. Eight. Thank you, eight. Jesus. <laughs> Do we actually need a commentator? <laughs> no, sorry. Kate, are you sure you know what you're doing? I might do. I might not do. It's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Eight. And I'll raise you eight. Uh... No. No, I'm out. I think that's... I'm not commentating or anything. I, just, I think that's a really good move. It always works for me. Sixteen. And another sixteen. Cool. I'm sorry, Kate. Oh, well, you know, bugger it. Look, OK, whatever I do is wrong here, but I really can't take this money. No, we should, you, mean, you, must, you must take it. No, but I can't. Look, I don't want special rules just because I'm some woman. If it helps, I'll have it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm an adult. I'm not a nurse. I mean, a child. You've got to give him the money. It's not some game. Well, actually, it is a game, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, a very, very serious game. I mean, I knew exactly what I was doing. Except I thought I was going to win. I mean, next time, I'll... I'd... Oh, God, not again. Oh. When do you think it'll... When do you think it'll stop? I don't know. It's driving me, man. I haven't had a decent night's sleep since it got here. If it's driving you mad, get rid of it. Yes, I know, but you know, I can't. It was my grandmother's most treasured possession. I'm really touched that she left it to me. It's just that I can't stand it. Sell it. But yeah, I know, but I mean, selling something like a grandfather clock, I wouldn't know where to start. You could sell it at auction. Auction? Yeah, I mean, they do it all for you, and it's actually good fun. It's a brilliant idea, Ian. Well, it's not brilliant, it's just an idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an expert or anything, but I have bought and sold a few things at auction in the past. Hey, what we could do is, if we all stood in different parts of the room, we could all secretly bid a against each other and artificially drive the price up and then... No, 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 that's a terrible idea. Well, just because Ian didn't say it. <laughs> no, we've all seen that film, we know how it ends. One of us ends up buying the clock back at an enormous price. Under no circumstances, it'd be a disaster. You know, he's just a heart surgeon, he's not bloody James Bond. <laughs> Wow. I know. People have been really kind. I've just left it there on the desk. Some people have done it without me even asking. <laughs> oh, right, OK. <laughs> Thanks, that always works. Yeah. How's the training coming along? OK, yeah, we're following this programme and today's a rest day. Oof, I can't tell you how great that feels. No rest days are good. <laughs> hey. Hello. Douglas, have you got a, uh, a to minute to... this morning. Nothing. Uh, what? I woke up and you weren't there. You'd gone. Gone where? Well, that's what I'm saying. Where were you? Oh, this morning. Yeah, right. I just I woke up early. So then I, I got up and went out to have a look at the sky. <laughs> you didn't do an extra 
training run, did you? Who did? Because I thought we agreed to do this whole thing together. I too. Me. I thought we said this wasn't competitive, it was just a race. Just a race, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go. No, don't go. That's why I came in. I'm glad I caught you. Would you be interested No, I've already signed yours. Have you? Yes. Right, thanks very much. How's it coming along? Yeah, it's all right. How many have you got now? Altogether, say probably about, um, three. Three? (laughs) Is that including... Yes, that includes John Toast, yeah. (laughs) Oh, Mel, I've got someone coming to see me at 12 o'clock. Robin. Yes, he sometimes comes a bit early. Could you make him a cup of coffee or something? Something to make him feel welcome, because he's a bit timid and I think sometimes he doesn't feel, you know, noticed. He's here. Robin, hi! Wow. What a fantastic place. Ooh. Have you noticed a lot of the people are antique, too? Reserve price, 250 quid. How do they arrive at that figure? I don't know. The auctioneer, valuer, you know, bloke, seemed to know what he was doing. I mean, he had a bow tie on. <laughs> right. My dad used to say, a man who has chosen to wear a bow tie of his own free will has forfeited the right to be taken seriously. <laughs> That's good. That's very good. Yeah. My, my dad used to say that, too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. What? He's a professional. He's a dealer. A dealer? Wow, fantastic. He's not looking at everything. No. He probably comes up here every week from London, buys a few very specific things, and then flogs them in some little shop off the King's Road for five times what he paid them. Maybe I should sell my car in London. That was silly. How'd you get it there? At one hundred and sixty pounds, one hundred and sixty. At one hundred and sixty pounds once, twice. You all done. One hundred and sixty to the gentleman in the green jacket. Thank you, sir. Now, lot seventy-five. Here we go. This lovely example of a Hanbury and Wilson long case clock in walnut, circa eighteen seventy. I'm so excited. This was such a great idea of yours, Ian. It's good fun, isn't it? Yes, Ian, go on, tell us all. How did you get to be so... (laughs) £100 for this handsome piece of furniture which would grace any house. Who will start me at £100? (laughs) Who will start the bidding at £100? Douglas. Okay. Who will start the bidding at £100? At 100 pounds, thank you, sir. 100 pounds at 100, 100 pounds, 100 pounds bid, 120, thank you, sir. 120 at 120, 120, 120, 140 at 140, 140, 60, 160 at 160, 180 at 180, at 180, 180, 200 at 200, thank you, sir. Do I hear 250? 250, 250, thank you, sir. 300 at 300 pounds bid, 300 pounds. I'm rich. I'm going to be rich. I love you all. I love you. Thank you. At 350 pounds, at 350, 350, 350, 400, thank you, sir. 400 pounds. Do I hear five? Do I hear 500? 500 pounds? Is he on mad? Is that your clock? Pounds, thank you, sir. 500 pounds. <laughs> You'll give me six. Do I hear six? Do I hear 600? Do I hear six? A thousand pounds. <gasps> One thousand pounds. Thank you, sir. One thousand pounds. Do I hear you realise what this means, don't you? I said this might be fun. Pounds. What does it mean? If he's offering a thousand, just think Do about what it what? actually must be worth. Pounds. At £1,000? At £1,000, then? In fact, how dare he? Kate, calm down. It's all just a big game of poker, isn't it? It's all about bluff. £1,000 for my dead grandmother's clock? No, Kate. I'm not being ripped off like that. What does he think I am? At £1,000 once? Twice? What the hell do you think you're doing? You sit under no circumstances. Shh, shh, shh. Watch this. This will be good. At 1,500, 1,005. It's against you, sir, at 1,500. 1,500. At 1,500, then. Do I hear any more bids? At 1,500 pounds. Bids with the lady at the back at 1,500. Well, now what? What do I do now? Now what do I do? What do I do now? Um. Where is he? Where is he? At one thousand five hundred pounds once. Of course, this is typical of him. You know, he gets you into trouble and he just buggers off. Right. <laughs> Are you all done? Four thousand pounds. Four thousand pounds. Thank you, sir. At four thousand pounds, then. At four thousand pounds with the gentleman with the fair hair, then at four thousand pounds. At four thousand pounds once. Twice. Four thousand five hundred. Four thousand five hundred. Thank you, sir. Four thousand five hundred pounds. Four thousand five hundred. It's against you, sir. Four thousand five. At four thousand five hundred. 
At 4,500 once, twice, you all done. Twelve. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the overcoat. <laughs> now, lot 76. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'd like to propose two toasts. Firstly, the clock. The, the clock. clock. And secondly, to Mel and Craig. Oh, Mel, Mel and Craig. Craig. I think it's a really wonderful thing you've done, and as a result of my recent windfall, I'd like to increase my sponsorship of you to five pounds a mile. Oh, Kate. Or ten pounds a mile in Craig's case, because it matches the same total. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks a lot. And hey, thanks for the T-shirt too. That's really cool. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> It's good, yeah. It's just a sprain. You know, apparently in a couple of weeks I won't need to crutch at all. But really, no, it's Mel you should be proud of, you know, because uh, it was for charity and everything, and she didn't stop to help me. She just carried on right to the end. I'm afraid I didn't actually notice. She didn't even notice. You see, is she great? OK, and thirdly... Oh, OK, there are three toasts. Thirdly... To Ian. Ooh, to Ian. Ian. To Ian for being yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, well, we know all that. Oh, really, I... <laughs> I haven't done anything. No, that's right. And because this is all because of you, I want you to have half of it. Oh, no, Kate, I can't. No, I insist I've made my mind up. No, but, Kate, I can't. Oh, God, here we go. I mean, <laughs> think of your grandmother. My grandmother? Yeah, this is really her gift to you. What, she, you think she's going to hear all this from beyond the grave? She couldn't hear when she was alive. She was deaf. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything. You know, just treat yourself to me. I mean, on me. Just, you know... <laughs> Spoil yourself. Take someone away for the weekend. I don't know. Well... Paris. Paris? Yeah, why? What an amazing coincidence. Because I've been thinking about exactly that. Have you? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, but the problem is, how do you ask somebody to go to Paris with you without it sounding like a, you know, dirty weekend? Well, just don't. I mean, don't ask. You know? No, don't shut up. <laughs> OK. Well, I don't know. Just say it. You know, I think you're going away to Paris for a weekend of sensual indulgence and obviously romance. Can you help me with that? Right, and you think that might work? Well, it might do. Women are funny. Give it a shot. OK, then I might. Because I'm going to be seeing her later tonight. Yeah, what? <laughs> At a nurse's party. That's very helpful. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. No, sorry. Sorry. What, what? You're right. Give it back. It's my grandmother. She's bloody furious. <laughs> Kate is back at the same time tomorrow night here on BBC One. Jeremy Clarkson, Nigel Havers and Noel Gallagher. Alistair McGowan makes a big impression next. <laughs>